Here's our next head-to-head -head case. This time the topic is middle ear masses. Remember, I'm going to show you two different patients with two different diseases that look kind of similar on imaging, and it's up to you to come up with what the two different diagnoses are. Here's a couple of images from patient number one. This patient has a soft tissue mass that is filling the epitympanum. Now I've added patient number two. Patient number two also has a soft tissue mass partially filling the epitympanum. These two patients have imaging that is similar in some ways, but different in other ways. You should pause this video right now, pause it, and figure out what you think the diagnosis is in each of these two cases. Okay, let's talk it out. In patient number one, the mass fills the epitympanum. Look how few mastoid air cells there are. There is essentially just the antrum itself, the mastoid antrum. Also, look how wide the additus ad antrum is. On patient number two, all of the mastoid air cells are preserved. In patient number one, the ossicles have been completely eroded away. There's only little wisps of bone left behind. In patient number two, the ossicles are intact. You can see the malleo-incudial joint here. You can see the incudostapedial joint here. In patient number one, the lateral semicircular canal has been eroded. In patient number two, there's no evidence of erosion of any of the inner ear structures. In patient number one, the mass is indistinguishable from the facial nerve canal. In patient number two, that's still true. The mass is indistinguishable from the facial nerve canal, as if it were eroding into or maybe emerging from that canal. So what are our two diagnoses? On this side, all of these erosions in the setting of a middle ear mass suggest cholesteatoma. The bone erosions are the critical finding that indicate cholesteatoma. The loss of mastoid air cells indicates chronic infection, which is the cause of that cholesteatoma. So it all fits together. This is called lateral semicircular canal fistula. On this side, there is no evidence of chronic inflammation. There's just a mass intimately associated with the facial canal. That's because this mass is emerging from the facial canal. This is a schwannoma of the facial nerve, and it doesn't erode anything.